Welcome to another pro tip video from Keystone RV. Today we'll be looking at the new SolarFlex Outlast 660IL. We will review the inner workings and operations of this system with Matt Walkins. So I'm Matt Walkins with Future Solutions. Let's start off by talking about the inner workings and the components and features of this RV. Here we are at the front of the unit and we're gonna go over a 660. So first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to turn on the 12 volt power. So this is my 12 volt disconnect. This connects the battery to all the 12 volt loads inside the coach. So we're gonna turn that on. Next, we'll wanna turn on our PV disconnect. This is what connects our solar panels okay. to the 50 amp MPPT charger. Third thing we'll wanna do is we wanna turn on the inverter disconnect. This connects our inverter to our 270 amp hour Dragonfly battery. And on top of the inverter, there is a switch. And you'll just wanna make sure that that switch is turned up and that will connect the inverter to the batteries and turn the inverter on. From there, Again, we've got 270 amp hours of Dragonfly Energy lithium battery. We've got a Victron MultiPlus 3000. Now this will run an air conditioner. It also runs seven circuits in your RV. And then behind this cover here is our 50 amp MPTT charger and our Victron Smart Shunt. So you can find the serial numbers here on the sticker. There's also room to expand on this coach. So okay. it has 660 watts on the roof. It has an additional docking port, so it's good for, to add another 660. And then that box is actually pre-wired for an additional 50 amp MPPT So 660, charge. that'd be three solar panels for that situation. Yep. Yep. So three more solar panels. Right. Would you be able to run two ACs or no, just one? No, you're still only connected to the one air conditioner on this through there. Okay. Now you do have room. This is, you can see this metal case here that's holding the one uh, 270 amp hour battery, there actually is room for an additional one underneath it. So you can go to 540 amp hours of battery, but you're still only controlling the circuits that are on this coach. So Now, when we're putting this away in storage, mm -hmm. we're going to want to shut the inverter disconnect off. We're going to want to turn the inverter off first. We're going to shut off the inverter disconnect. Then you're going to decide, are you inside or are you outside? So am I going to have access to sun when I'm storing okay. the coach or not? If I've got access to sun, I'm going to leave the PV disconnect alone because I want the, the solar charger to continue to work to charge the batteries. If I'm inside storage, let's just shut that off. Go ahead and turn it down. Turn that off. And then we'll want to obviously disconnect our house loads before we go and put it into cold storage. And so, so these plugins right here, people are going to look at, we don't do anything with those. Correct. Those. Those are essentially pigtails that attach your inverter into the circuits in, inside and what connects your inverter to shore power as well so it can act as a battery charger. Okay. You'll just want to leave those alone. Obviously one is in and out and they're, they're attached to the front. So the way it comes from the factory, it's set up. Those are the really the only three to four things that you need to turn on. Okay. So Matt, what are the advantages on a system like this? Well, Mike, there's a couple of them. So. Aside from having 660 watts of solar on the roof, which is gonna help you boondocking away or be able to use your unit and charge your batteries uh, when you're not plugged in, you also have 270 amp hours of lithium battery. So for those unfamiliar with lithium, that is 270 amp hours of usable battery. Whereas with okay. lead acid, you see a rating, it says it has 100 amp hours, but you're probably only gonna get about half of that out of it. Right. One of the other features is you've got a Victron 3K MultiPlus inverter, you can run an air conditioner off of this battery. Obviously, you have to watch for how much energy you're consuming versus, versus how much energy you're putting in. So it's not an unlimited supply, but it gives you the ability to run that and run seven additional loads inside the camper. So I actually need to watch my app while I'm using this system or just periodically check in on it? Absolutely, make sure. absolutely. So everything in the coach requires power. So even though we're just sitting here and we're running one little LED light, that's still consuming energy out of that battery. Now, if we we're out in the sun and I was able to put in five, 600 watts of power, obviously I've got, I'm putting in more power than I'm taking out and I'll be able to run with that. If the sun goes away and I'm running an air conditioner, I'm running all of my lights inside and I've got 500 to 1000 watts of power coming out, but I can only put in a few hundred watts right. in, I'm gonna have to watch my time remaining and make sure because you can 
go ahead and power your way into a dead battery situation. And that's not something you want to do. So on the app, you can, you have to watch and the app and watch to make sure the sun stays out? No, the app- Or is there a warning like when it gets too low? It's gonna, it's gonna warn you, but your app's gonna tell you in a time remaining and a percentage of where you're at. So if we start with full at 100%, the minute I start turning it on and running other things, it's gonna start to come down. If okay. you're plugged in, the charger's gonna keep up, you're gonna get charged that way. You'll probably see it say indefinite as long as you're plugged in. Okay. As soon as you unplug the coach and we start running off this battery, that there's a timer gonna start. And it's gonna count down how many minutes you have remaining and it's gonna give you that as a percentage. Okay. So when you get down low and you get to that point where you're 20, 15, 10%, then it's time you're to gonna start have turning to, things yeah, off. Yeah, start making some changes because you're gonna to need to get power. So let's go look at the Victron app and how we use it to connect to all three devices. All right. Once you've downloaded the Victron Connect app, you're going to open it and you're going to see a list of local devices come up. Now, once you've connected to your devices on your unit, you'll see them up here in the My Devices section. Everything else that's down here is a pretty good chance you're parked next to another Keystone customer and that's going to be their devices. We'll go ahead and up, see what we've got here on this coach. So we've got a Victron Smart Bus. So basically that's your inverter. We've got a Smart Solar, which is your 100 volt 50 amp MPPT charger and then you've got your smart shunt. So any of these devices are yours I would go ahead and I would rename them and I would also set up your own password. So let's go ahead and start with your Victron Multi Plus inverter. So we're going to click the tab it's going to connect and now we can see on this page what status we're at we're bulk charging and we've got information on our coach whether or not we're plugged into power and whether or not we're using AC power. Now what I can do in here is I can set my shore power. So let's say you're plugged into 15 amp service at a neighbor's house or you're just getting ready to go on your trip. You can actually turn down the input power that it uses and it'll keep it from blowing the breakers on your coach. So now obviously there's some presets up here, but most people 30 amps would be good enough or 34 amps would be good enough. Up here, once my inverter's been turned on, I can turn the inverter off and on, I can set it to a charger, or I can turn it to inverter only. Most of this time when you're plugged into this coach, you're just going to leave it in the on position because you want it on as backup power and you want it on as a battery charger. Down here in the status, uh, you'll see bulk charge, you may see absorb charge, you may see float. Those are just the different stages that you're going to see. And if you look here, you'll see 86.5 amps, that is your charger. That's how much power your charger is putting in. So right now we're charging the batteries. We're at 13.65, 66 volts. The battery temperature obviously is in Celsius there. And then that's how many amps we're putting in. That's basically all the real, you can get more detailed information if you want. It's gonna tell you how much power you've put in and some other stuff, what state is, but this is basically all you're really gonna need to see. Turning your inverter off, I can shut it off here. Click off, it'll turn it off outside. Now I'm not doing anything, I'm not charging. Turn it back on and it comes back on and everything works. My other devices, let's look at my smart shunt. So if you're not familiar with what a shunt is, a shunt reads all the power coming in or out of a battery. It reads it in watts. Currently this unit shows you right now we're putting in 865 watts. So that's the battery charger running. One thing you'll notice is I don't have a state of charge here. The reason I don't have a state of charge is because these batteries were low and we started and plugged the unit in. Once they get up and they get to 14.1 volts, you'll see the state of charge reset to 100%, and then it's gonna give you an accurate time remaining at that point. I don't have that right now because we just plugged this unit in. One of the interesting features about this is I can see a total history on how much energy I've put in, how much energy I've taken out, how, what my depth of discharge was, and then I also have a trends feature that right now shows me battery voltage and current. And this updates constantly, so this is like a living graph of what your unit's doing. All right, so let's look at our third device. This is our 50 amp MPPT charge controller. Now this unit comes with 660 watts of solar on the roof. So we're inside a building, so we're not gonna get any solar today, but this is where our solar wattage is displayed. We can see here voltage from the solar panels, this is the current that's coming in. Obviously, again, we're inside, so we're not getting anything. The voltage of our battery bank is here and the amount of current and the state of our charger. Now, there's some interesting features here. 
In the history, we can see as this unit sat outside after it was built, this is how many watts of solar were put in while we were outside. We also have a trends line that we can configure, but it's showing us battery voltage and battery current. So this is a live graph. It will tell you what's going on at current times with your RV solar. So one thing to remember on this, at night, obviously you're not gonna see, at night you're obviously not gonna see any solar. So you can see here in the display, I'm getting zero watts. Don't worry about that. That's what's supposed to happen when the sun comes up. The other thing you may see is, well, I may have sun, but my battery voltage is at 14.1 or 14.2. At that point in time, your batteries are full. So your solar is gonna go ahead and turn off. It may be sunny out, you may see voltage in the solar, but you're not gonna need anything, so your watts is gonna be zero. If you need additional information, you can get it from the Quick Start Guide, KeystoneRV.com, and the My Keystone app. Special thanks to Matt with Future Solutions for helping us shed some light on this SolarFlex Outlast 660IL. My pleasure, Mike. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. From all of us here at Keystone, happy, happy trails. trails.